Okay, here's the valve setup. <clears throat> and what I did is, uh, if you can see here, I got some PVC. You can see how it's got that lip inside, right? What I do is I take a ball bearing, and it fits right inside like that, and it'll block it off. And I did this, I've done this twice, because this will be one side of the valve right here. You can see this will come up in this way right here. Alright, so that's one. See the ball's on the bottom. So the airflow it comes this way. So that way when the, when the piston turns, you can hear them. Hear them? That's the ball bearings bouncing up and down. When the piston turns, when, when it pulls, because I, I took the camshaft out so the valve stays shut. So they don't open or close. All it's doing now is the piston's moving up and down. And uh, it's acting like an air pump. So what happens is when the piston goes down and it sucks air, it can't go through this one because see there's a ball bearing inside of there well that ball bearing actually blocks the flow like when the flow is pulling this ball bearing blocks it this one on the other hand because it's coming from the top it actually raises this ball bearing unless the air or gases whatever pass through okay so then on the flip side when your piston goes all the way down and when it starts to push back up well the opposite takes effect because now this ball bearing because it's being down when the air comes in to push it, it it stops it but on this case the ball bearing is above the air so when the air comes out it actually blows out this way so in fact what I've done <clears throat> for you know less than 15 bucks I've made two one-way air valves and I seen some what they call check valves and they're like 25 30 bucks a piece and I'm like I'm not doing that so I've made two air valves so when this spins around you can hear it I don't know if I can uh, I don't know if I can show you. Maybe I'll light a candle or something and uh, maybe you watch the airflow. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can do that right here. Or maybe. What I would like to do, I'm going to cut back here in a minute and we'll see. Uh, we'll see if uh, I can put a drill or something on it. I don't think this might be too far away for it. I don't know. I don't know if I can move it or not. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now you'll be able to see it. Now when I turn it, you'll be able to watch it, watch it it'll suck this flame. Wait. See that? I don't know if you can see this one up here or not. I don't know if does that show on that side. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to turn it maybe. Maybe you can see it. Let me turn it this way. So I haven't glued this down yet. Maybe you can watch that secondary. This is the one that's actually going to blow the air out. Ouch. See it? It sucked in the one side and it blows out the other side. And that candle wax is pretty warm. Which is nice because it's pretty cold outside. But yeah, anyway, so that's the idea. And uh, I can set this up. Well, you won't be able to see it because I can't. Yeah, I was going to hook a drill up to it and actually turn this. But what I'm going to do is it's got a shaft on the bottom of it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pulley on that. And I'm going to mount this down to something. And I'm going to put another motor beside it. And then, you know, belt drive it. And then what that will do basically is that's my air pump. So when I get the gas fire running, then uh, I'll bring the intake to here. And then the exhaust part will go here. And I built a, uh, oh, where's it at? I built a little adapter. It's in the truck. I built an adapter from some old pieces that I had because eventually I want to try to pump it into that tank right there. It's an old propane tank that, that has the old style valve on it that you can't like refill because it doesn't have the new the new style valve on it. But I'm going to use it for uh, charcoal gas. So I'll, I'll pump it like maybe 100, 120, something like that so it won't be you know excessive and it won't blow up or anything like that but what I did is I made this because that screws into the uh, propane tank and then of course there's a pressure gauge and this end right here is going to come out and what I did is I'm going to put a fitting for the uh, air hose and I'm going to put an air hose fitting on it these are yeah these are adapters the adapters down to the size but yeah I'll put an air uh, fitting on it for an air hose so I can make it whatever size I want. 
and then I can have the gasifier sitting in one spot and then I can have the pump and stuff you know, sitting it doesn't have to be right next to it you can be 25 feet away however big the air hose is <laughs> and use a standard air hose so it's the only thing that you need that's special but yeah so that's the idea and uh Still got the motor back here, which I'm like I said, I'm gonna mount back there. It's going, this is gonna generate power. And I found something that really works, and I overlooked it because I was thinking about putting a car alternator on it. Because there's a battery bank inside the camp, there's like three right now. There's well, right now, there's two uh, car batteries. There's gonna end up being three because I'm getting a new one for the white truck, and I'm gonna take it out and put it in there. But right here, the treadmill motor, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mount this to that motor out there because I've spun it with my drill. And at full RPM with the drill, it'll go 40. It'll put out 40 volts, which is, which is more than what I need. I was thinking about, you know, uh, regulating it by pulley size, but then I was like, okay, why don't I just get a voltage regulator? You know, like an old-style voltage regulator that used to mount on the sidewalls of the old Fords. Get one of those, because then when your voltage varies on the input side, it'll still put out a constant, you know, 13 point whatever volts for your batteries. So that's part of what I'm gonna do with that. But uh, the idea is to get this set up to where it'll run on the uh, gasifier. And I can split it off inside to run the, uh, the gas burner. So and I can have heat and I can have electricity both at the same time. Let's see what my battery bank's up to today. Oh, that's high, 15. Yeah, it's doing good. Well, there it goes. But let's see, that's what I'm saying. I've only got two batteries in it right now. I've only got two that are hooked up. Yeah, right there. That's the battery banks. If I kick this on, which is the... That's the homemade inverter. I just heard the... Let me kick on. If I kick the fridge on, it'll come down. Yeah, you hear it? Well, you can't because the radio. I heard it kick in. You heard the compressor kick in. It is dropping down around 13. Let's see, that's right. So that's that's cool. Like I said, I'm I'll put another one in there, maybe two. Yeah, you can hear it now. So yeah, so now I can have a refrigerator. So I got a refrigerator, and then I'll have heat or stove right here, which this is going to kind of this is going to set over here. And I'm going to run the, the pipes through there. I'm going to tee it off. And so in the back of it, it'll go to the generator. Like it, like if it's at nighttime or if it's cloudy or whatever, I can go back there and kick the generator on for a little bit, charge the batteries up, and then kick it back off. And then I come in and still have, you know, the electricity, you know, to run stuff. And the cool thing is this thing's already wired. Because that's actually a DC, it's a converter. Uh, it's got house current that goes into it, which now is what I'm bringing out of here. But it's coming in here. This is my house current that comes into it. And then it puts out, it's got a, a, a 120 volt output, but it's wired to all these outlets. I see there's one right there. And there's one right there. And then the lights, of course, the lights are 12 volts. But I don't, I don't think I hooked them back up because I'm going to use my other lights because they use a lot less power. But yeah, so it'll be. Now there's a furnace right there that's built into it. It's supposed to run on propane. I haven't tried it yet. But if I can start compressing this gas into the propane tank, maybe I can run this furnace. I don't know. If not, I'll take this furnace out and use this storage space for you know other things because in a camper, of course, you have to utilize all the space that you got. But yeah, there'll be a refrigerator. There's electricity. Uh, we'll have heat. So the only thing missing is a water system. So this is going to be the off-grid camper. So anyway, that's what I'm working on. Since it seems like the revolution has been postponed another four years, uh, it gives me time to, you know, get some property and get some shit situated. Because when the shit hits the fan, dude, I'm gone. We're moving. We're we're heading to the hills, and that's it. You guys can like kill each other and take each other out. I don't care. I'm done with this stuff. <laughs> you know, it's just silly shit. People can't get along. Want to worry about what other people are doing? It's like, no, that's not me. So. Anyway, that's what I got. So, happy election day result, election result day, should I say, after the fallout. So, whether you won or lost, you know, you gotta work together. You know, be nice to people. It doesn't matter if they believe something different than you. 
You know, you gotta try to tolerate them. Uh, you know, until they start fucking with your shit. But, anyway, have a good one.